Now, Psalms 37 is going to be our foundational text. And if you have your paper Bible or have your automatic Bible, your, uh, your, uh, your digital Bible, well, your digital Bible, we're going to make our confession. Now, let me tell you, the South, the North worked me hard today. Don't tell them I said it. But they worked me hard. They made me plow. I was so glad when they said unto me, let us go to the south. Amen. And then, doctor, I already got up here and got y'all all ready. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, so I, I'm, 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 I'm ready to have a good time right now. Amen. I already plowed. I shouldn't have to plow right now. Amen. All right. Let's make our declaration. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I am a believer, not a doubter. I'm a doer, not just a hearer. And my life is the better after having heard the word of faith faith comes by hearing and hearing hearing by the word of God amen Psalms 37 uh, uh, verses 3 through 5 in the King James and they have it there on the board trust in the Lord and do good so shalt thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed Delight thyself also in the Lord, watch this, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Amen and amen. My assignment for these next two weeks is going to be teaching you uh, from the subject of embracing, embracing possibilities. Everybody say that, embracing, embracing possibilities. Yeah, embracing what God says is possible for you. See, you can be exhorted in it. That means somebody give you a pep talk. You can be educated in it. Somebody can instruct you. You can even be exposed to it, see it in somebody else's life. But until you choose to embrace a truth, then it will not radically change your life. And so this, this, these, these two days and these two weeks is about you embracing what God says is possible for you. The possibility plan that God has for your life. Amen. Now, I know, I know you're saying, well, yeah, no, 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 no. We're not talking about just knowing about it, but we're talking about embracing it. Choose to believe it and choose to pursue it. Now the scripture says to us with crystal clarity that he will give us the desires of our heart. He'll give us, now we're going we're gonna to break that down, but we see that he's made a claim here that he'll give us the desires of our heart. Now this is not a lesson to beat you up or anything like that, but it is a lesson uh, that is going to propel you to, 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 to exercise your faith to elevate your expectation for these last three months, this last quarter is going to be an amazing quarter for you. All right, your enthusiasm overwhelms me, but that's all right. Now, now the reason that this message is so um, appropriate is because I really understand uh, when God challenges you to believe outside of your comfort zone and I had that experience in 1983. In 1983, I'm, we are out of the little raggedy building. Y'all knew I was going to put it up there. Yeah, we're out, the, we're out of that little raggedy building. That's where we started in 1980. And uh, by 1983, we are now in the red brick building on Jensen Road. Now, I thought I had made it then. I thought I had made it. Don't judge me. But I really thought I'd made it. You know, look, I got, I got stained glass windows. All right, put the little raggedy building back up. They act like they, see, y'all want to work, but that's all right, that's all right, all right, all right. yeah. Now, y'all know that that other building on Jensen looked much better than that. 
Do y'all need my help? Okay, watch this, watch this. Let's take, take me inside the building. Take me inside the building. Whoa. Oh, 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 oh. Okay? Now, so, 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 wait a minute. Do you see that's a TV camera over there? I'm rolling, y'all. I'm rolling. I'm comparable to all of my peers. You follow me? I, yeah, you know. And so, it's at that time that I'm, you know, I'm, I got a little money in my pocket. Church got a little money in the bank. You know what I'm saying? And so, um, uh, I'm saying I'm getting ready to coast, you know. And God said, oh, no. He said, I did not teach you faith for your benefit alone. I taught you faith. I improved the quality of your life so that you could advance my kingdom in the earth. Okay, okay. He was saying to me, it's time for you to embrace the possibilities that I have for your life. In other words, he's saying, I brought you out of poverty. I brought you out of where you were. Watch this. Now, what are you going to do for me? Look what I would have missed if I had, if I had not embraced the possibilities. And really, that's not all the buildings. And then the lives that we're, we were able to touch. Oh, my God. We touched millions. Your life. If I had stayed over there in that little raggedy building, never would have touched your life, never would have improved your family, never would have improved your marriage. None of that would have happened if I had not embraced what God wanted to do in my life. And that's what this lesson is about today. It's about us laying aside our selfishness with, the, with what we have already attained and understand God saying, I have much more. Everybody say, God, God, God has much more. In Amos chapter 3 and verse 7, they're going to put that on the board. Amos chapter 3 and verse 7, it says, and this is in the New Living Translation, indeed the sovereign Lord never does anything until he reveals his plans to his servant, the prophets. So God says, when I want to do something in the earth, I am going to tell my prophets so they can announce it. I'm going to tell those who have an ear sensitive to my prophetic, uh, my, 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 my prophetic declarations. I'm going to tell them and then they're going to announce it to you. Amen. Now, so here's the prophetic word that God told me. You've been hearing uh, Dr. I say it. And boy, if, if you listen to my apostles' conversation, heard some of the other pastors say it. But here is what the Lord told me is, is, is in the works. Everybody says it's in the works. That the next three months will be, the next three months will be uh, months of reciprocal manifestations as obedience in the kingdom will yield amazing timely results and set in motion future increase. He's talking about the next quarter. This quarter. Your enthusiasm overwhelming. That's right, that's right. Godly dreams, visions, and aspirations are on the fast track. God will use Divine connections, everybody say divine connections. Divine cancellations, divine concepts, and divine consecrations to cause the final quarter of this year to be the catalyst for the greatest yield of your faith all year. Right. Don't contaminate the moment with skepticism, unbelief, and doubt. Just choose to rejoice and rekindle aggressive faith to give substance to the plan of God for your life. Amen and amen. Now, <laughs> see, when God gives a prophetic word, as he said, it's to tell everybody what he's up to. Amen. And so God is saying, and we've, we've heard it echoed from pastor, that this fourth quarter, 
it's going to be like no other quarter you ever experienced. Now, now the question is, can you believe it? Can you embrace it and believe it? Okay, let me tell you this. I don't miss it when I say God said it. You, you got to understand, I don't, just, I don't have to say God said it to use leverage on you when I, want, you know, when I would want to. No, I don't do that. That's playing games. If I tell you God said it, then he said it. Let's look at the track record. When uh, 9-11 happened, I told people in the beginning of the year, God said, don't travel in September. Everybody kind of looked at me like, yeah. I said, and they called me. They, I had people who called me and wanted to say, well, we're a double honorary. I said, man, this ain't about money. This is about what God said. And when 9-11 happened, they shut down all transportation. Now, in 2017, at the, at the uh, strategist conference, I stood up before everybody. I said, the Lord said that you will, learn, you will have to learn to do church from home. All the preachers looked at me like a cow look at a new gate. Like. And then I showed them how to do it. But they ignored it. But when the pandemic hit in 2020, and they had to do church from home, they went, oh my God. God tried to warn us, and we missed it. So I'm telling you, if I tell you, that's what the Lord said. You better get ready. And I don't know about you. I'm ready for this fourth quarter to be amazing. Amen. I'm embracing that possibility. Everybody say, I'm embracing that possibility. And so when a, pro a prophetic voice agrees with the promise of God, in other words, I've got to be able to see God do something in an amazing way in a short amount of time. Let me give you one example real quickly, um, and that is, I think you've heard about, a lot of you have heard about David when he was at Ziglag and, uh, and the enemy came and took all his family away and all of that. Y'all remember that? And he went to the Lord, shall I recover all and all that sort of thing. He was at a very low point in his life because even his soldiers were thinking about mutiny and killing him. Watch this. But in three days, everybody say three days. In three days he became king. Oh, yeah. If that's not a dramatic turnaround, see, if that's not a dramatic turnaround, so if God says in the next three months, you're going to be experiencing better like you've never dreamed. Now, I'm going to give y'all something I didn't get us, I didn't get us, I didn't get a Noah. But you're going to receive it tomorrow because I'm writing, I, write, I wrote it in a letter. God says, within the next 10 days, y'all don't even know what I'm going to say. Y'all shout out. <laughs> y'all shout, and y'all ain't even heard what I'm saying. But God says, he's about to bring a connection in your life in the next 10 days. That's going to help usher this amazing things that's going to happen in your life in this fourth quarter. Everybody say 10 days. Amen and amen. Now, so a prophetic word agrees with the promises, activates the power of God. See, the power is activated because I've declared it. It alerts the people of God. Get ready for it. And it announces the plan of God. Who is this lesson for about embracing possibilities. Who is this for? It's, let me tell you, it's for those who are in a state maybe of overwhelm. You just don't know, oh my, you're overwhelmed. It's for those who are, who are facing an opportunity. God's going to bring opportunities in your life. It's for those who may have been facing opposition. Watch this, because no weapon that's formed against you is going to prosper. God's going to cancel some weapons that have been formed against you. It is those, watch this, it's, been, it's those who have been offended. You carrying around hurt. It's time for you to let it go and live. Everybody say, let it go and live. It's for those, watch this, who are oppressed. I mean, there's this oppression on your life, and uh, it's, it's demonic, and it's time for you to take authority over that and claim your dominion. It's for those, watch this now, who are experiencing overflow. 
Mm -hmm. See, y'all don't want to talk about that overflow. See, you can get to the point where you are so basking in your overflow that you forget that God did not bless you just for you. Yeah. Mm. No, no, you, now, now you know I already threw myself under the bus, so let me, let me throw myself under the bus a little bit more because, um, you know, this is not to hurt anybody, I'm to embarrass anybody. I, I, no, I'm just trying to help you because if you don't catch yourself, you'll get beside yourself. See, back in 83, I got besides myself. I'm, oh, no, I'm getting I went out, now go out. All right, y'all know, know, y'all know. <laughs> yes, indeed. Okay, listen to me, listen to me. I'm good. Now, do I need to have a handheld mic? Y'all just let me know. I'm, 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 you know, I'm the visiting, I'm the visiting minister. Okay, watch this. Watch. Y'all gotta y'all understand. I want you to get, get this. Because I would have missed so much, but I got beside myself. I'm just gonna do what I'm gonna. And then and another, uh, it happened several other times. Well, I'm just telling you, we are prone in this flesh not to want to push. So I know, I remember when we built the twin building, this building and the one in the in the uh, in the north, man. I said, I ain't preaching multiple times no more. I'm not going to preach any multiple times. I'm going to preach one time in each location, and I'm going to throw y'all the keys. Y'all do what y'all want to do. Y'all know what that type of people standing in line, all that sort of thing. And the Lord said, oh, yeah? When did you get the right to set your agenda? I said, okay, I'm sorry. Time out, time out. Time out, time out. Yeah, I got to live besides myself because he had much more. Are oh, y'all listening to him? Tell me what I'm saying. So, now I got three points, three points. Number one, point number one will be this message of embracing possibilities. Number two is going to be the mindset for embracing possibilities. And then number three will be the moment of embracing possibilities. And so if you're a smart class, I'll get to them all. When we come into the, when we look at the message of it's all throughout the Bible, that God has a bigger dream for us than we have for ourselves. And if we don't watch it, we will dumb down what God wants and replace it with what we want. Mm, amen. Now, so when I read scripture, scripture talks about possibilities. Those things that God says can happen. Possibilities. In Mark chapter 9, they'll put it on the screen or you can find it in your Bible. Mark chapter 9 and verse 23. Jesus said unto him, if Thou canst what? Believe. All things are possible to him that believeth. Wow. All things are possible to him that believeth. How, how much is all? Can, can you wrap your mind around this? That God says all things are possible. See, back then I embraced this, okay? Because God starts showing me things and I'm going, <laughs> seriously? He says, it's possible if you can believe it. Let's look at another passage there in Matthew 21 and 22. Because it, there it says, and all things, there he is, all things, whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, what? Believe it, ye shall receive. So if I know how to believe, watch this, then the whole world opens up. All right, let's look at what Jesus taught on another occasion when he's teaching systematic faith in Mark chapter 11. In Mark chapter 11, For verily I say unto you, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. Now Jesus just stated the principle of the law. And then he turns around and he uses that law, and the Bible says, verse 24, put it back up there. Verse 24, he goes on to say, therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you, you what? Come on, don't be afraid to say it. You what? You desire. God does not have a problem with your desires. <laughs> what things soever you desire, what? When you pray, believe you receive them desires, and you shall have them desires. I know it's not good English, but hey, you understand what I'm saying. 
So, because what God read is what, what God is looking for, and, and, and back then, what I did not understand, later I understood, as I always say, God gives me regiment before he gives me revelation. God was looking for a partner, somebody he could work through in the earth to get his plan done. But I had to believe it. I had to embrace what he said was possible. Because what he was saying was possible, I'd never heard of it. I didn't see it. But if I would embrace it and believe it, he could bring it to pass. Are y'all with me now? All right. So let's look at these partnerships God wants to establish. He wants to establish a partnership. This is now the categories of, of partnerships with the Father. And that, that is first with assigned projects. God, for him to work in the earth, he's got to work through somebody. So the scripture says he will give you the desires of your heart. Well, that's not always him saying, what do you desire? It means God will drop a desire in your heart so you can incubate it with your faith and bring it to pass. Did y'all get that? Okay, watch this. God wanted this building built. All right? So he wasn't going to send angels down here to build it. So he had to drop that desire in my heart. And then I shared it with you all, you all, put it in your hearts, and our faith brought it to pass. So it is now in this season. As God drops vision into pastor's heart, it requires all of our faith working together to bring it to pass. Now, I'm going to talk about this more on next week. I was in the office talking with Ivan, and, you know, Ivan just pulls stuff out of me. He just does. He just does. But I was talking. Now, See, that's not going to cause you to come up short. Doctor, I said it also today. Because when you do that, you step into or you activate the law of reciprocity. Do you know, God said, I'm not going to let you do anything for me that I'm not going to pay you back now? I don't think you heard that. God says, I'm not going to let you do anything for me that I'm not going to pay you back on this side of the grave. Well, I believed it. I believed it. And God said to me back then, he said, son, I can afford your dreams. Let's see that just, just yeah. did you hear me? Somebody tell you they can afford your dreams and you know they got it? I believed it. And there's not a dream that I have that has not been fulfilled. Watch this now. I want, you to, I want you to make the connection. It's because I put his kingdom first. Then the other things were added unto us. All right? The next partnership is the partnership for the promises of God. We got to appropriate those. What do you mean? That every promise in the word of God is there, but it's only, it's only manifested through our faith. Promise of healing. Promise of prosperity. Promises of deliverance, it requires our faith. And we got to believe in healing. We got to believe in prosperity. We got to believe in more than enough. And then the final one is uh, the partnership for what I call aspiration pleasures. And what do you mean? That's just stuff you want. Okay, y'all. Okay. Well, I'm already used to it. Y'all was, they was at that, like that at the north, so. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Watch this. See, I can't help I just believe the Bible. Because people say, you got to do that. Yes, I have. Because he said, <laughs> he said, he wanted my joy full. Now watch this. That same thing can apply to you. He says, if you abide in me, watch this, and my word abide in you, ask what you will. That ought to just get you excited. That he says I could ask. Well, I can't help I ask. I was talking to a preacher, and I was showing him some scriptures in the Bible about, uh, you know, it says, if you abide in me, my word abide in you, you can ask what you will. Show him other scriptures about the Bible says, you've not chosen me, but I've chosen you, that you go bring forth fruit, that your fruit remain, that whatsoever you ask the Father, in my name, he'll give it you. 
You follow me? And then John chapter 16, verse 23, he says, you know, that, uh, you know, ask in my name that your joy may be full. All of this. And you know, he said, oh man, that's just a scripture. Well, to him, it was just a scripture. But to me, it was a promise. And, and Rob, I, I can't, I can't, you know, <laughs> I can't help folks don't believe it. I believed it. Lady B and I believed it, and it came to pass. I ain't afraid to ask God for stuff. Now, religion teaches you not to ask him for stuff. You ought to not ask God for anything, you ugly thing, you. You just ought to be glad that you're saved, that he's going to take you to heaven. Well, I am glad he's going to take me to heaven. But it's not Jesus or. But the Bible says it's Jesus with. That with Jesus, he will freely give you all things. Okay, I got to get back on my lesson. Now, so what this is about, can you embrace the possibilities that God has for you? Amen. Don't get satisfied with just one house. He promised you houses. <laughs> huh? Yeah. He promised you houses. So he will give me richly all things to what? Enjoy. And then, watch this, he is committed. He's committed to possibilities. Well, he's committed to possibilities. What do you mean? He's committed to make it happen. The question is, is he able to make it happen? Come on, I need a better amen answer. Do you really believe God is able to make it happen? All throughout the scripture. He's able to do exceedingly. He's able. And see, that's what you have to see. What, what shuts most people down is they can't figure it out. I'd, I'd, I'd have been nine months. Now, how God going to do it in three months? Ain't your problem. All he wants you to do is to believe. When, you know, back then, I'm thinking, okay, okay, you know, we had about 300 members there in the, in the build, red brick building. I'm rolling, you understand? Average church. But I, I'm rolling, you understand? And God says, no, son, I want you to preach to thousands. Huh? Thousands. Well, how that's going to happen? Ain't your problem. That's him. I just have to believe. Everybody say, you just got to believe. So when we talk about possibilities for you, we're not talking about you having to figure it out. That step by step, he will reveal it. That's why you don't want to miss next week. Let me move on because you have to have the right mindset. You got to renew your mind and get out of a religious mind and get into a mind that when I have a relationship with God, amazing things are going to happen in my life. And that's that consecration component that God gave me in the prophetic word. Because I have to have a lordship mindset. Now, they, I made him lord, therefore I do not have the right to tell him what I will and will not do. Yeah, but so I made him lord. And the whole, uh, fact, the whole fact about you making him lord means now you have, you know, you, you, <laughs> you forfeited the right to say what you're going to do. You can't tell him that. And how many know God asks you to do something you don't want to? Okay, I got about five people. I thank y'all for the God for the five. All y'all in here, ain't but five, six people raised their hand. How many know God has the right because he's your creator and he made you and he can ask you for anything he wants to ask you, even stuff you don't want to do? I, don't, I didn't really want to come out to Baptist church. I liked the Baptist church. I knew a lot of people, had a lot of connections, and he said, no. I want you to start an independent church. Drop the Baptist name. Oh, my God, I knew that's going to cause problems. Now, it's not, it's not as problematic now as it was back then. I, I knew that when I dropped that name, oh, my God, this, hey, hey, he must be a cult. Oh, yeah, he's a cult. I, 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 I was a, but God said do it. Are oh, you listening to me? I got to have, watch this, a limitation mindset. Now, what's this? Let me uh, embrace a limitation. I'm talking about how believers look at limitations. See, the believer does not look at limitations as a negative. I look at limitations as something that has to be overcome. Because limitations has nothing to do with my potential. Okay, let me explain that. We have, we have uh, speed limits. And the speed limit may be what? 
55, 70. Okay, watch this, watch this. This is simple, this is simple. If you don't get this one, we're going to put you out to church. <laughs> All right, watch this. Now. So the speed limit is 70. Does that affect the performance of the car? The car still can go 100 or more because the limitation does not affect the potential of the car unless the driver chooses to allow it to exist. So I'm saying, whatever limitations you are facing, that has nothing to do with the potential God put on the inside of you. And when you know what to do, you will always see every limitation as temporary because I'm overcoming it. Limitation of resource. I don't have enough money. That's all right. I'm getting some. Limitation of, 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 of knowledge. That's okay. I'll find somebody who knows and I'll pay them. <laughs> Are you listening to me? I, I, let not, I have. Why? Because I understand. My pers perspective on limitation is not that it will stop me. I'm going to overcome it. It is not a tombstone. It is a stepping stone for me. So when I'm embracing possibilities, I don't let a limitation stop me. We went on television back on Jensen. And I had one adult, and the rest of them was teenagers. Because everybody said, oh, you got to have this, you got to have that. No, I don't. All I have to have is God. Yes. Are you okay with going to tell me? Watch me. And we did. Why? Because I didn't look at the limitations. I'm going to wait until we get, you know, and, and then, then I'm going to do it. I'm gonna, no, 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 no. No. Watch this. And then <laughs> I have to have this, uh, <laughs> this mindset of likability. Everybody say likability. <laughs> now I got that from your pastor. You know, the other day she was teaching and she, she used the phrase, she used the word likability instead of favor. And since I was using all L's in my alliteration, so I just put likability, the mindset of likability. That folk are liking me. Because of the favor on my life, people just like me. Now, see, you got a choice of having a mindset, they don't like me. Or, or you can have the mindset of Christ, which says, watch this, whatever God says, that's what I'm going to believe. And God says, the, the, the righteous, those who've been declared righteous, he surrounds them with favor. Watch this. He surrounds them with people who like him. I believe I'm surrounded with people who like me. And I'm on my way to run into them. Now, what do you mean running into them? Okay. Give me five men. Quickly, 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 quickly. Don't mess with my time. Quickly, quickly. Five men, five men, five men right here in front of me. Five men right in front of me. In front of me, in front of me. Yeah, yeah face me, face me. Yeah. Is there one or somebody over here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, kind of make a circle. So I'm going to make a circle, yeah. Make a, I need a big circle. I'm going to a big circle. I'm a big man. All right, watch this, watch this. Yeah, I need another man right here. Another man right here. Another man. Right. So somebody come here, and you get right here. Right here, right here, right here. Yeah. Come on, come on. Come on, quick. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Quick, 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 quick. You there. Yeah, all right, watch this, watch this. Psalms 512. He surrounds the righteous with favor, folk who like me. Watch this. So watch this. I'll never run into them unless I start walking. So if I walk this way, I'm going to run into faith. If I walk this way, I'm going to run into faith. If I walk this way, I'm going to run into faith. I'm going to always run into somebody who likes me. Thank you, brother. Now, can you believe it? So if you get a no... That doesn't mean that's the end of it. Why? God has raised up people who like me. Okay. So, <laughs> so what is the, what I call hmm, the predator to my possibility thinking? It's those fiery darts that the arguments that try to pull me into doubt and unbelief. 
One argument is the argument of statistics. I got to silence that voice. Statistics don't bother me. I'm not ruled by statistics. I'm ruled by the word of God. But do you know what the chances are you coming out of a church like that and building all of that? Do you know what the odds are? I could care less. I rewrite statistics. Okay, okay, yeah, 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 I got you. Do you know what the odds are? Are you getting a new house? Ain't nobody in your family ever, ever, ever had a new house. Everybody in your family has always rented. And that's what you're doing now? That's what you're going to always do. Why? The statistics say you'll never own a home. You got to say the, the, the statistics and the devil is a lie. That's the prohibition, though. There's the, there's the prohibition. That's the predator thinking of what I call sense arguments. And that is logic. How it's going to work logically. Ain't my problem. The Bible says, and I, I believed it. See, the Bible says, <laughs> lean not to your own understanding. How hard is that? It says, okay, I am not denying that this may be difficult. But the Lord told me not to lean to my own understanding because he's going to figure it out. All right? And then the, na- the last one, and, I, and, I, and I'll start wrapping up. And that is, um, that is the, the argument. I had two of them, but I'll give you one. Now I'll give you both. And that is the argument of what I call the specialist. The specialist. First of all, specialists say you don't start a new church on the weekend, on a holiday weekend. That's the first thing. You don't start a church on a holiday weekend. Our church started on Labor Day weekend. All the specialists, you don't do that. And the specialists say you don't drop the name Baptist. Dude. How dare you do that? You got it? Says, Ain't nobody going to come and listen to you explain the Bible? All, oh, the specialist says, we'll give him 30 days. Here we are, 39 years later. Uh, watch this, watch this. The specialists say, oh, your predecessor, your, your, your successor cannot be a woman. The world is not ready for that. Oh, no, 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 that, 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 no you, can't, you can't do that. And not only that, she's not married. And not only that, she... I say, I know what God said. Watch this. And she's proven all the specialists alive. Ain't no man going to follow her. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Huh. I think we got more men in this section than we have ladies. We got about an equal number of men in that section as we have ladies. Everybody say, they lied. Just like they lied and said, nobody's going to hear me explain the Bible. People stood in line for me to explain the Bible. They said, everybody's going to come. You got to hoop and you got to sing. You know, because I can really do it. No, I can pull it off. Y'all think, like, I've been, I've been, I was hooping since I was a little boy. I know how to pull it, pull it just right. Ooh, oh, Lord. I know he's all right. (laughs) Sit down, girl. Sit down. Now, the specialists say, if I didn't do that, I wouldn't have a church. But people stood in line because I obeyed God. Watch this. And they will stand in line because she's the pastor of this movement. I got to close. Y'all, y'all took me a long y'all, y'all was y'all I got to close cuz y'all y'all took me made, made me go a long way. So, that's all right. <clears throat> I got to close with the moment. Everybody say the moment. Because that's a powerful moment when you decide to embrace what God has for your life. When you begin to trust that God knows better. And that he always has your best interest at heart. If I say the moment. 
So that destiny moment uh, is a very powerful moment, and we got to dissect that moment real quickly. Because in that moment, as I experienced back then, I never knew how dynamic that moment was. Because if I hadn't made the right choice in that moment, I'm not sure God would have given me another chance. I'm not saying God's going to kill me or anything like that. I don't believe that. But I don't, I don't know if another opportunity would have come for me to say yes to God. That's why you can't blow present opportunities. So that moment is a traumatic moment. What do you mean traumatic? Because many times it's God is asking you to step outside of your comfort zone to believe him for something. You gotta step outside of your comfort zone. And when God was telling me to, to, to do this church and all, it was totally outside of my comfort zone. Because back then, you didn't have multiple campuses. You, you know, you, knew, you, know, you can hardly go to a city now where they don't have one church and multiple. But that wasn't the way it was back then. And God telling me, I want you to do that. You'll have a church here that I go, okay. And persecution came immediately. And persecution that came was kind of, kind of silly. What are you trying to do, win the whole city? I say, God told me to win the world. Oh, watch this, watch this. It's also a truth moment. It, it really challenges, what do you really believe? Are you really thankful to what God has done and say, okay, now, God, I'm ready to do what you need me to do? It's a moment of truth, who's Lord. Then, watch this, it's a moment of temptation because the devil will come and say, you know how to do that? You know, you're all right. Why do you want to walk the boat? You're all right. But it's also a transition moment. Now, what do you mean? Because the moment you embrace his possibilities, he commits to you, and you step out of the realm of the natural into the realm of the supernatural. And God starts doing amazing things beyond all that you could ask or think. And boy, I tell you, Lady B and I, we're going to be married 48 years. Yeah, on Wednesday. I never knew we'd see the world. I mean, we've gone so many places around the world. Lady B got out, I think it was in 2020, when we got off the plane. She said, ain't nowhere in the world I want to go anymore. She said, I ain't said. She said, she was but I ain't going without her, so, you know. So watch this, watch this. An incredible life, all because I chose to trust him. Story is told. Yeah, y'all know who say that when they get married clothes. A story is told of a young lady who won a sweepstake, um, manufacturers, auto manufacturers sweepstake, and she had the uh, opportunity to choose any car from any manufacturer uh, used or new. And she had 14 days to make the choice. So she, she's wooed by all the manufacturers because they know that if she chooses their product, then they're going to get a lot of free publicity and their marketing teams were on her day and night. And everywhere she would go, you know, the cameras would follow her, wanting to see which manufacturer and which automobile she was going to decide on. After 14 days, she made her decision. And her decision shocked everybody because she decided on a pre-owned, a used car from a little-known manufacturer. And all of her friends says, what? You have the opportunity to get any car you want, brand new, from any of these manufacturers, and you chose that? And they wanted to know, why would you make that choice? And so she began to explain. She says, well, I did my homework. I did the research. I researched all the manufacturers and the cars that they had that I liked. 
And after doing all of the research, I also researched, you know, this manufacturer that I finally settled on, and I found out, but this car was impeccable. I found out that uh, it doesn't, it doesn't, it had to have any trouble. The warranty is great. And then I looked at the testimonies of those who had owned it. And I decided, based on their testimony, and based on its proven performance, that's why I settled on it. I, I heard that and said, oh my God, that's my closer. That's my closer. What do you mean? When it comes to making a destiny moment choice, I need you to trust me this morning. I've done my research. I, I've done my research and I've looked at the testimonies of others who said yes to God. And if you'll trust me on this, you will say yes Watch this, and you will have an amazing life. I look at the testimony of Abraham, he said yes. I look at the testimony of Moses, he said yes. I look at the testimony of Joshua, he said yes. I look at the testimony of Gideon, he said yes. I look at everywhere, every testimony that I looked at of this proven process said yes. Oh, I got my own name in here. I've proven the process. Oh, there's room for your name. Y'all know how I close. It is no secret. <laughs> what God can do, what he's done for others, he will do for you. Amen. I